Why vinyl is better than digital audio. Revival series. Yes, I know. I made a video a while ago where I said that there should be no vinyl revival. Vinyl should be dead and buried like all of those ancient dinosaurs and dodo birds. In fact, cremate it first so there's no chance of any kind of bodily resurrection. That's what I said, and I haven't changed my mind on any of the points I made, which include scratches and surface noise, distortion, variable stylus to groove speed, noise, vibration, rumble, cogging, stylus drag, mistracking. Any sensible person living on any sensible world in any sensible universe would surely agree with me, right? Well, yes, they really ought to, because anyone who disagrees is clearly deluded, or they have the superpower of ignoring these issues. But, yes, I have a but. There's one way that vinyl is most definitely superior to digital audio, either CD or streaming. I prefer the sound of vinyl. That's a comment sent to me by one of my YouTube viewers. Is he deluded? Well. I couldn't rule that out, but really, could anyone genuinely prefer the sound of vinyl and have a genuine, factual reason for that? Yes! <laughs> Digital audio has a problem, a massive problem. It's all about the loudness war. Audio historians will tell this tale better and more accurately than I can. But the gist of it is that back in the 1990s, some hotshot A&R manager was listening to a preview copy of his artist's latest CD. And he said to the producer, why isn't this CD as loud as that one? Referring to a new release from a rival label. And so the loudness war started. Mastering engineers were tasked to make every release louder than their rivals last, culminating with Metallica's Death Magnetic, which is reputed to be the loudest CD ever made. I believe it. I have a copy. <laughs> Death Magnetic actually doesn't sound at all bad. But the problem was that for the majority of releases of that time, loudness was prioritised over actually sounding good. And don't forget that every CD playing music lover has a volume control, that they can turn up as loud as they like. The CD itself doesn't need to be loud. Fast forward to today and things aren't as bad, basically because streaming services and YouTube set a limit on how loud playback can be which, to be clear, is before the listener's volume control, and they can still cause themselves physical brain damage if they want to. But today's loudness standards are still loud, and the mastering engineer, or even before that, the recording engineer or producer, has to do stuff to make the finished file loud enough. There are basically two things you can do to make your audio louder, without, of course, clipping, because that is bad without question. Firstly, you can use what's called a brick wall limiter. You can push the level higher and higher into this limiter and the output simply will not clip. The problem is, though, that the subjective audio quality degrades the harder you push it. Push it a little and you'll hardly notice. Push it a lot and the sound gets pretty gnarly pretty quickly. But even at low settings, True music lovers and audiophiles will notice that the listening experience is rather tiring on the ears. OK, some people like it like this. If you do, tell us all about it in the comments. <laughs> the other main way to add loudness is harmonic enhancement, which is the polite term for distortion. I'm old enough to remember when distortion was considered a bad thing without exception. But then when digital audio came along, it was so clean that people felt they'd lost something. So a little distortion would be added by various methods to create warmth. All well and good. The harmonics of distortion mimic the harmonics we hear in acoustic instruments and the human voice. But the thing is that in digital audio, there's no limit to how much harmonic enhancement you can add. And it makes everything seem louder, even without adding any actual level. So, <laughs> you want your master to be loud. Apply lashings of harmonic enhancement and then push the brick wall limiter as hard as you dare. Make your output meters cling as closely to zero dBFS as you can all the way through your song, all the way through your album and all the way through your entire catalogue and career. <laughs> Congratulations. You've achieved your goal of amazing loudness and dreadful audio quality. So let me circle back to vinyl. The mastering engineer's role in vinyl is rather different, 
and rather more subtle. In digital audio, the mastering engineer can do absolutely anything that will fit into 16 or 24 bits. Anything. With vinyl, the mastering engineer is limited by having to make the record playable. If you lived through the glory years of vinyl before CD, you may remember that some records had a habit of skipping on some players, always in the same place. It wasn't common, but it did happen. And some players had a habit of skipping whatever record they were playing. The quick way to explain this is that the undulations of the groove cause the stylus to accelerate, and too much of a push can launch the stylus all the way out, causing a skip. And at a milder extent, if the stylus isn't able to follow the undulations of the groove precisely, you'll get mistracking, which results in distortion and record wear. <laughs> I'm skipping over a lot of detail here, but basically the vinyl mastering engineer had to cut a record that was playable and easily playable by cheap decks. And when they did this, the result was audio that was less messed about with. I'm not going to say not messed about with at all, but nowhere near as much as is possible with CD and masters intended for streaming. So, if you prefer a sound closer to what the producer, recording engineer and artists heard in the studio, it's perfectly possible that you'll prefer the sound of vinyl, even though it has quite a number of defects. It isn't that there's something intrinsically wonderful about the vinyl sound, it's that there's something intrinsically wonderful about a sound that is cleaner, purer and closer to the artist's and producer's intentions. Now, let's start doing that with digital. One more thing. <laughs> Some people like the sound of heavy limiting and distortion. If that's you, enjoy. I'm David Meller. See you soon. <laughs>